guys welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be showing you how i got this look it's just a really easy orange halo gold eye i guess anyway i'm calling it weird but wearable because of course it orange is a color that not a lot of people are used to wearing or not a lot of people are comfortable with wearing however the way i've shaped it and the way i've applied it and the way i've paired it with this lip i think makes it just a little bit more wearable than most bright orange eye looks that you'd see so if it's something you've been wanting to try or orange eyeshadow is something you've been intrigued by this might be a good place to start Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using the Morphe 3502 palette. However, um, you don't necessarily have to have this palette. I only used four shades in this look, I believe, and any of the shades that I used are actually pretty common in a lot of palettes. You don't necessarily have to have this palette to pull off this look. All right, first I'm going into the shade Universal, and I'm just putting that in my crease and building it up until I'm happy with it. Then I'm going to go into the shade Blaze, which is that matte orange shade. Taking a little Morphe M506 and putting that on the outer and inner corner of my eye. And if you'll notice, I'm actually putting the majority of the product down with my eye open because it's easier for me to get the shape down, especially when I'm working with colors like that. So um, if you have a hard time getting the shape that you want with your eyeshadow or making sure that it shows up once your eyes are open, just apply it with your eyes open. I know that sounds weird, but apply it with your eyes open and then you can go back in and finalize the blending once you've got the shape down. And I'm just kind of going in with a fluffy brush, a clean one, and buffing out the edges a bit, then touching up any of the pigment that got blended away. Then I'm going to go into the shade called Pure, which is that white gold shade. And I'm applying it with my finger, but interestingly enough, this shade seems to have dried out. Um, it used to be a lot easier to apply with my finger, but now it just seems to want to fall apart. So I'm going in with a wet brush and that worked really well, but I'm really kind of confused by that. I know the palette isn't expired, but um, yeah, dried out a bit. So then I'm going to go in with a Real Technique shading brush and just buff out the edges of that after it has dried. Because I did have to use a pretty wet brush to get that to transfer onto my lid. Then I'm just going to re-intensify whatever I blended away. But just right in the middle. I'm not going to go out to the edges. And then I'm fit touching up the blending on the inner corner of my eye. Just making sure that it kind of matches and follows the same shape that I'm outlining right here. You can see that one's blended. And you can see it's buffed out really well on the inner corner of my eye. And it seems to follow the same line or the same shape as the outside. But you can see this one doesn't. It just kind of fades into nothing. So I want to make it look like the one on my left eye. So I'm just going to keep blending that. Then I'm going to go in with Pixie Glow Mist. And I'm going to kind of soak up the excess with my Beauty Blender. It seemed to ruin my eyeshadow though. I've noticed that a lot lately that it seems to make my eyeshadow break down. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'll put it on over my makeup anymore. But anyway, I'm going to use the Jouer foundation because since I'm doing such an orange eye and orange is, you know, found on my face elsewhere, that shade is. Um, when I do shades like that, I like to do super full coverage foundation. So of course I'm using the Jouer. It is the most ridiculous coverage foundation on the market, I think, at least <laughs> that I've tried. And I'm blending a little bit more of it just to conceal any of the redness or orangeness because it really shows up once I, once I do orange eyeshadow or red eyeshadow. I really need to go full coverage. Just kind of spot concealing here and there. Then I'm gonna go on with the RCMA No Color Powder and set all of that down. I do need to set this foundation so I can blend stuff on top of it. And see, so you can see the Pixie Glow Mist, it almost like broke down that eyeshadow. I do not understand. I am not keen on that. Anyway, I'm going to go back into Universal and buff that on my lower lash line. I did go in and touch up my upper lash line where the Pixie Glow Mist kind of messed it up. And I'll touch it up again here in a moment. But I'm just making sure I shape that. And if you can see the shape I've created kind of mimics my natural shadow or where my natural shadow would be. And then I'm going to go in and buff out the edges of that just to make it fade into nothing, but still follow that shadow in my bone structure. And don't worry, I will go in and extend my brow to that point. But just kind of watch how I shape it. Then I'm going to go into this brown shade down here. 
and I'm taking a really tiny e.l.f. detail crease brush and just blending that right in my outer corner but taking it down onto my lower lash line at the same time and you can see the difference it makes so the eye I'm pointing at now my left eye like you can see the difference it makes just putting that little bit of brown shadow right in the outer corner I didn't put anywhere else and it took me like two seconds so I'm gonna do that to both eyes blend it out then of course going back in with that gold because the pixie glow mist just kind of took it away then i'm going to use ColourPop mr bing and again i'm going to show you what a difference it makes just a really subtle brown eyeliner like that the eye i'm pointing to now has it this one does not and you can see the difference that it makes so then i'm going to go in with my brows and like i said i'm just going to extend my brow out to my shadow. I've been extending my eyeshadow quite far lately, so I've been doing the same with my brow. Then I'm just going to bronze with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer as per usual, and then into the Sweet Cheeks Blush Palette with this blush that I've really been liking. And I'm actually putting my blush on looking straight on in the mirror today, trying to get a different shape going. Last minute contour, went in with the next contour palette. I decided that it just seemed to need a little bit of contrast. But since my blush was looking a bit heavy, I wanted to go in and buff out the edges of it with the Hourglass Diffuse Light Setting Powder. And then I'm taking Becca Vanilla Quartz and highlighting my cheekbones, nose, Cupid's bow, chin, all the normal places. Just not going super heavy with it. And then something I've been kind of experimenting with lately, I've been highlighting the top center of my forehead because I don't know. I seem like I feel like I have a really small forehead and it seems to make a little bit of a difference. Then I'm going to take Kat Von D's Lolita, overlining my top lip just a tiny bit, not too much. And if you guys want like a tutorial on how I do this, I will totally do it. I just don't like to overline in excess. Anyway, put some mascara on and uh, there's the finished look. And of course, it's up to you to decide whether or not it's wearable, but um, I think it is. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions or anything, leave those in the comments too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber and you wanna be, click the subscribe button on your way out, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.